Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. We're sitting here talking about lots of releases in WWE. They really opened up the floodgates and uh, started letting a, a lot of big names going out. Um, we will do an updated video talking about more of the names that are, that are going to be coming, but two of the biggest names on here that I think have the biggest impact in wrestling going in the future is going to be uh, Gallows and Anderson. Uh, they just recently restarted their Talking Shop podcast uh, through MLW. Um, it was one of my highlights of my uh, Sunday mornings uh, for, for quite a few years back in the day when they were in New Japan. Uh, they ended up ending the podcast um, when they were going to sign with uh, WWE. Um, and and uh, I guess they found a way to, to get back into it. I don't think they knew they were going to get released before today. I don't think that's the reason why it came back out. But since so many other WWE wrestlers like uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins uh, were able to do their own podcasts on their own, not through the WWE podcast uh, network, I guess they just said, why not? As long as they you know, had good editing where they didn't say something to cross the line. They'd be all right. Um, but as of right now, Gallows and Anderson, they might not have had the best run in WWE, but I think it did help them um, with the fact that, um, you know, it got them in front of more of a mainstream television. I remember WrestleMania 32 weekend. Wow, they were there for four years. They were there, honestly, longer than I thought they were. They probably got two runs with the straps. Um, but I, I remember WrestleMania 32 weekend. I thought they can't. They were coming in to be like the main event deal. Um, besides for, you know, them teaming with, um, I think it was, um, them and AJ in a tag team match against Cena and the Usos. If I remember right, that's who uh, Cena teams with. That was like, like one of the, like, m like mid card main event. Like it wasn't the main event to the pay-per-view, but it was definitely one of the, the big matches, uh, that were on there. And then, you know, after, you know, they sort of split with AJ the first time. Um, you know, they, they kind of were just fluttering around. I, there was at one point I thought they were going to get their own like WWE network show or maybe like an online show where they started up the Botch Club, which was basically stealing stuff from Botch Mania. I thought the show was produced well. It was done well, but it didn't really go over that well. Uh, with the fact that so many people thought they were just blatantly ripping off Botch Mania and they never even got an episode two. Um, but, uh, you know, they had a run in WWE. Um, definitely, I think of all the names that are released today, they are going to be the biggest names that are out there on the open market. Uh, they could go back to New Japan. They could sign with AEW. Um, these are, you know, you know, Bullet Club members that were teaming at the same time as the Young Bucks. Um, Kenny Omega was in that group. Um, so they do have, um, I don't, I don't think it lines up that Cody was there at the same time they were, but, um, you know, they, you know, they, they have that relationship where they could go. Um, I'm really thinking that Gallows and Anderson are going to try and find a way to, to stay here in the States, um, and be, um, in AEW. If they, if they did, they would be able to be home more, uh, where, you know, Gallows, uh, has a wrestling school, uh, in Florida. Um, and you know, both of their families, um, live here as well. And they have to, you know, Carl Anderson's probably one of the biggest family dads there is in the wrestling business. It's probably one of the coolest reasons to follow him, um, when he's tweeting out pictures of his kids and, you know, he doesn't really want to leave when it's time to go out on the road, even though he loves the wrestling business, you know, it hurts for him to do it. Um, but you know what, you know, they're just good dudes. I really, really like them. I think I like them the most because of their podcast. If they went back to New Japan, it would be a definitely a real big shot in the arm to the Bullet Club um, because of the fact that, you know, besides for Jay White uh, and the Girl is a Destiny, I, I can't really think of really anything that's going on over there. And I, I didn't watch Wrestle Kingdom and I probably haven't watched the show in well over a year. Um, I don't really know what's going on over there, but the Bullet Club doesn't really seem like the biggest thing in wrestling like it did a year ago or two years ago, but maybe it's like the NWO. Maybe it's just run its course, or maybe I just don't really know what's going on over there. Um, and that's just about it. So, I mean, if they came back, um, you know, with Gorillas of Destiny and them both being in the tag team division, I don't think it would kill it, but, you know, them two having two heavyweight teams 
tag team and you would think they would kind of have a log jam there in the tag team division but i'm sure they would figure something out but you know in my mind i'm betting right now aew is the place to be for gallows and anderson